What's up guys, Jav here, back today, jumping into Destiny 2. Now in today's video, we're taking a look at the best PC settings for Destiny. So if you're jumping in for the first time, or you're moving over to PC, then this is the video for you. Now, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a rating down below. That super helps me out here on the channel. And if you're new around here, I want to keep up to date with all the latest Destiny 2 content, then be sure to hit subscribe as well. But without further delay, guys, let's jump into the video. Now, before we even jump into the game, guys, there are a few settings we need to take a look at, and we could do this from our desktop quite easily. Now, if you're running an NVIDIA graphics card, you need to bring up the control panel first of all. Now, once this is loaded, we're going to be taking a look at our resolution here. And the reason for this is there are multiple resolutions, but also frame rates as well. So as you can see, I've got a triple monitor setup, but the key part we're looking at here is this refresh rate. So as you can see, I've got multiple options and a lot of the time this defaults to say 60 hertz, which means on average you're probably seeing 60 frames per second. So even if you have the beastiest of PCs, if this is set to 60 and your monitor can handle more than that, like mine can, then you're capping yourself out and you're not maximizing your performance. So come here first, make sure you set this to the maximum setting that you have available, that the resolution is adequate. If you want better frames, then 1080p is absolutely fine. But mine's a 1440p monitor, so these are the settings that I have. So be sure to come here first to make sure you have your setup correctly as well. Now alongside this, we can also take a look at G-Sync. If you have a G-Sync monitor, make sure this is enabled. And if you play in windowed, make sure you tick the bottom box as well. This will allow you to tab out onto other applications like Twitch or Discord easily without actually disturbing the game too much. But either way, make sure you have it enabled and you have the correct option selected depending on what mode you're running in game. So there we have it, those are the desktop settings. So make sure you have those set if you're on an NVIDIA graphics card. With that all being said and done though, let's jump into the game and see what we can do from here. So here we are then in game and as you can see, I'm getting around 165 frames per second in orbit at the moment. There's a reason for that. If we head over to our settings by pressing escape and go to video. Now I'm running full screen 1440p, which maximizes the resolution of my monitor and matches the resolution I chose on the desktop. Now the reason I'm running 165 is I actually have capped my frames. I've turned V-Sync off because this adds an element of latency and also it means that I can actually maximize my G-Sync settings as well. Now if we turn this off though, now as you can see I'm running about 250-ish, 240 instead just sitting in orbit. But there's no point because my monitor can only do 165, so it's wasting frames and your graphics card is working harder than it needs to for frames that I can't even see. So with that being said, let's jump back and revert those settings. So there we have it. So we've got the frame cap enabled. Now, field of view is a key part. This is obviously how much you can see on screen. On console, this defaults to around 86. And with a wider field of view, naturally you can see more of the game. And as a byproduct, it takes more VRAM to produce the graphics that you see on screen. Now you can start off at the same setting as console. It will use less VRAM, but it also should help improve your frame rate. And with that, you can slowly increase this to the point where you get a balance between a good field of view, a decent amount of VRAM to maximize your graphics card, but also a solid frame rate as well. So play around with this, guys, set it at the console setting and then slowly increase it until you find the sweet spot that's adequate for you. Now, in terms of graphics quality, a lot of this will default depending on your hardware. A lot of these I will keep actually the same. Things like anti-aliasing and ampere occlusion. I don't change these too much because these default because of my graphics card using GeForce Experience. If you don't have that downloaded, then I highly recommend that you do because it will provide recommended settings based on your system. And with that, we can tweak them rather than having to completely overhaul them, which will save you time and a lot of effort too. So these top three settings, you don't really need to touch. Now as for texture quality, again that's defaulted, but shallow quality is a key one. Now this game is quite well optimized anyway. If you put this on lowest, if I could, I would turn it off. But by putting it on lowest, it's not actually that different to highest, but it does drastically improve your frame rate, guys. So be sure to check out shadow quality and set that to lowest if you're having some issues. Depth of field, switch this off. You really don't need it. Not in this particular game as well. It's a nice touch, but it doesn't help you out and it eats up VRAM unnecessarily. So be sure to switch that one off. Now these five are defaulted. These match whatever GeForce experience provided for me. So these again won't change too much for you. The main ones here are at the bottom. So motion blur will give you 
probably around an extra 10 frames if not more just by turning it off it's really not needed when you're running higher frames and wind impulse i see a lot of questions about what is this these are the little particle effects that you get seeing around scattering on screen when you're entering caves and create a better sense of realism within the world of destiny i guess now as always with any slight effect like that it does increase the amount of vram needed so again turn it off if you're struggling and you will see a notable improvement so these bottom four are quite interesting. This one will be greyed out if you don't have a HDR monitor or TV. However, the bottom two will noticeably improve your frames just by turning them off and they don't actually change the look of the game too much. Not in a game like Destiny where there's a lot of physics and a lot happening on screen all at one time. Now the key one here is render resolution. Now you can probably reduce this by up to 10% without it detrimentally impacting the look of your game too much. And when you adjust this in combination with things like your field of view, it's striking that balance between how much you can see on screen and how good the resolution of that is on screen as well. I wouldn't drop this anything below 90, but maybe drop it to 95 and then slowly increase your field of view up here and see what improvements that you get. It's going to be a balance between the two that will be the sweet spot for you guys. So let's apply those changes. So we're going to jump off in game guys and check out the frames and see how we go. So here we are guys, as you can see I've loaded in on IO, we're getting about 120 frames in patrol at the moment, jumping on the sparrow here. Now as you can see, even without motion blur and depth of field, it's actually relatively smooth going and the frame rate is holding pretty firm, getting up to 140 frames. So it definitely makes it different guys and definitely be sure to change your field of view and tinker with the render resolution just to see what noticeable improvements you can make to your own frame rates. But yeah, doing all those things guys should help you get a decent frame rate boost and have the best settings you need going into the new year. So there we have it guys, that is how you can improve your frame rate and enjoy the best experience in Destiny 2 on PC where possible. Now if you have enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a rating down below, that super helps me out here on the channel. And if you're new around here and want to keep up to date with all the latest Destiny 2 content, then as I said before, be sure to hit subscribe as well. I'm going to jump back into the game as always guys, but I will catch you all again very soon.